Hello beautiful people, first before we get started I'd just like to mention that this look is actually part of a collaboration, if you'd like to see the full video I've left a link in the description box below. Let's get started. So I started off by creating the horns for this look, now I'm not going to go into too much detail in how I made them in this video, if you want to find out exactly how to make them I've got a separate video for this linked in the description box below. So while I was waiting for the glue to dry on my horns I moved on to the forehead. So to make the materials you will need paper, craft foam, craft knife, acrylic paint, model magic, warbler and a heat gun and for the optional steps you're going to need hot glue and a dremel. So to create the forehead which is the leaves I used some craft foam for this. To start off with I just got a piece of paper and I stuck it to my forehead. I then really roughly sketched out how I wanted the shape to be. Uh. Is it just me or do you not think that baked beans are really underrated? And then the bits that are not even, I'm just going to cut them off, open it up and you should have a nice even vagina. Once I was happy with the shape of the leaves, I then cut out five of these exactly the same shape and size. Place them on your head just to see if you need any changes and if you're happy you can then move on to cutting them out with foam. I was keeping in mind that I was going to create them a little bit bigger than intended just so I could cut them down later on if necessary. Again, you want to repeat the same steps like you did with the paper and cut out five of these evenly with foam. Next, I then cut a slit right in the middle to the centre of the leaves. This step is optional, if you wanted to you can just leave them flat. This then allows me to fold over the pieces which causes the leaf to bend. To me I just think it looks a lot more natural and organic rather than just having a completely flat leaf. You then want to take your glue gun and then just glue the folds in place. Again this step is really fussy and optional but if you wanted to you can take a dremel and sand the bottom of the leaf. I did this because of course I didn't want the folds to be really visible and then when I glued them on I wanted them to look as blended and as seamless as possible on my forehead. Yes. Next you just want to get some acrylic paint and then paint your leaves. If you wanted to you could prime your leaves first with perhaps a Mod Podge or something like an undercoat but I don't think this was necessary because they're only really small pieces. But because I didn't prime them I then went in with a second and a third coat just to make sure that the colours really pop in. Honestly I'm so shocked that I found this clay in B&M. It's almost like a melted piece of foam. I've made a little template out of paper. This template is just going to help me get the right shape and size and make sure that all five eyeballs are even. Taking the clay, I'm just placing this on top of the templates and I'm just literally creating the shapes of the eyeballs. You want to repeat this until you have five of them. Next, I'm just having my contact lenses next to me just so I can see exactly how I want to paint them, but you're going to want to paint the eyeballs so that they match your eyes. I'm using acrylic paints for this. You should end up with something like this and as you can see I made a couple extra eyeballs just in case. I also forgot to mention that I made a couple extra half leaves and then I cut arches through them and this is going to go on the side of my real eyes. That moment when you make the literal most perfect coffee, you get the exact right amount of grains. <sighs> Moving on, so now we're going to be doing exactly the same thing as we did with the leaves. So we're going to get a piece of paper and we're going to put it onto our face and roughly draw out how we want the shape of the skull to be. And once again I'm folding it in half and then cutting it to make it symmetrical. I'm also keeping in mind that I'm making it a little bit bigger just so I could possibly cut it down later if necessary. Once I was happy with the shape, I then drew around the template onto Warbler and then cut this out. If you have never heard or used Warbler before, it's basically a thermoplastic where you can heat it up and then you can sculpt it and when it cools down it goes hard and you can keep repeating this as many times as you like. Using a heat gun, you then want to warm up both sides of the Warbler and start creating the shape. <laughs> Looks like a stingray. Boop, 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 boop. I don't even know what noise they make. 
Using the same template as you did earlier, you then want to repeat the same step, but only for just the bottom half. This is going to create the bottom area of the skull. Before joining the pieces together, I looked at my reference picture and created the shape of the nose. Once I was happy with that, I then joined the pieces together, which I did not film because I just got a bit carried away and instead filmed my head. Great. Oh, why is it bumpy there? So I noticed that deer skulls have two holes at the bottom and I was being super lazy and I tried to use some scissors but you want to use a craft knife, Stanley knife, whatever you want to call it and yeah you're just going to heat it up and then you're just going to slice away baby. I'm just using a reference image here, see that? For this bit it doesn't have to be completely soft but soft enough so you can just slice through it. As you can see the edges are quite rough and it's quite bumpy as well so I'm just going to take the heat gun and I'm going to just clean it up. Alright so I'm just going to stick straight into painting. I'm just going to start with a base colour in a sort of cream. You're going to want to do a couple layers of this and once that is done and dry enough you can then go ahead and start painting the details and the cracks. So once you're happy with the details the skull is looking pretty clinical, white and clear so we're going to fix that by washing over the whole thing with a dark brown. This is what's going to make the skull look really realistic, textured, natural and even dirty. So taking just a small amount of dark brown and a lot of water, you're going to mix this and just wash over the top and then you're going to take some tissue and dab the surface. You can use all types of different browns for this and you're just going to keep playing around, washing it and dabbing it, washing it and dabbing it until you're happy with the result. And I noticed in my reference picture I had some darker areas which I then try to imitate here. A nice little technique that I like to use when washing is that if you look at the nose area you can see where the warbler sort of joins and I deliberately left the paint to sit there so it brings out the edges and the cracks naturally. Another little tip is if you just add water by itself and then use the tissue you can actually lift off the paint if it's still wet and then if you wanted to you can then just take some light cream or even white and dry brush some of the areas to raise them and make them look like they're coming out rather than in if that makes sense. So I'm using a brush and I'm just wiping off the excess paint and I'm just lightly brushing that onto the surface. Moving on to the juicy bits, now we're going to start off by hiding our eyebrows using just any regular glue stick. Using some liquid latex, I'm using the clear latex by Ben Eye. you're going to want to simply just glue the leaves to your forehead. Using the liquid latex and a sponge, you then want to apply this on top of the leaves just in the centre of your forehead. This is just going to really secure it and bring them together. While the latex was still wet, I then got some tissue and torn it into small pieces. I then kind of did like a paper mache technique on top of the leaves just to kind of bring it all together and I tried to make the forehead look as seamless as possible, which is why I used a Dremel earlier on the leaves. You want to make sure your hands are nice and clean and then just apply your contact lenses. I'm using the Mesmerize, I think it's in Louise, I will leave it in the description box below. Next I'm using the NYX Jumbo Pencil in Milk and I'm going to apply this onto my eyelids. Using the liquid latex I'm just applying this onto the skull and then I'm just simply sticking this onto my face. I'm using the NYX SFX Cream Colour for this, you just want to then paint a dark green underneath the skull. Using the latex again, you then want to apply the eyeballs onto the leaves. Using some yellow, you then want to paint the centre of your forehead in between the leaves and then you also want to add some little bits to the leaves as well just to give it a bit of texture. I'm now applying some foundation to the rest of my face and I'm using the L'Oreal True Match in Golden Beige. Now taking some brown, I'm just really going to define my jawline and then also applying this to the side of my head to then create a more sort of squared illusion. Moving on to the eyes, I'm using the NYX Ultimate Bright Eyeshadow Palette. Using the mustard and the yellow from the palette mixed together, I'm just applying this to the centre of my eyes and then for the inner corner of my eye, I used a glitter. 
Then going in with some green, I then applied this to the outer edge of my eye. And because I'm really awkward and I like to work in random orders, I then went back onto the leaf and I used the green colour to then join the leaf onto my eye. Moving on to the eyeliner, so I'm just literally doing a normal wing except from it's a lot more extended and this goes onto the leaf as well. I felt like the inner parts of the eyes really needed brightening up and bringing out so I took some paints and I just literally went over it and I also created a white eyeliner on top of the normal liner as well. I used the Meron Paradise paints for this. I then also lined the bottom of my eye with the white. This is going to enlarge my eyes and create the illusion that they're bigger. So I thought that the leaves are way too big for my liking so I just went ahead and just cut them down. I then took a white eyeliner and lined my waterline. Now line underneath your eyes and create a bottom line. I'm creating a winged eyeliner on the inner corner of my eye. This is going to make it a lot more dramatic and sharp. It's like a cat eye. You want to extend this line onto the skull as well. Now I'm just lining the rest of my eyeballs. Try and make them match your real eyes as close as you can. And then once again you then go in with some white as well and again try and just match them. And for the bits on the leaves I'm actually using acrylic paint for this. Okay so moving on I'm just applying some latex to the outer edges of my skull and I went outside and picked some flowers and leaves and you're just going to want to go ahead and stick them on and it almost looks like it's sort of growing out from the edges. You also want to apply the latex onto your chin underneath the skull and I'm using some bits that I found on the floor and you're just going to literally stick it on your face and it almost looks like it's overgrown underneath. Taking some brown eyeshadow you really want to sharpen up your contour line and I'm not going to blend this out too much either because I wanted it to be quite dramatic. So I thought the leaves looked a little bit boring and flat and just kind of one colour so I just went ahead and got some cream colours and just put a little bit on my finger and then dabbed away and this created a bit more texture and life. I also went and applied some plants on the inside of the skull as well. And then taking some eyeliner I then lined the bottom of the leaves to kind of join it all together. And to finally finish off the face I then just went ahead and got some white acrylic paint and just added a little bit of dots on the leaves just to make it a little bit more, I don't know, magical and just finish it off. And finally we're moving on to the chest, so for this I'm just creating some shoulder pieces. I started off by painting on the shape that I wanted and then later on filled in the inside with a darker green. Once I was happy with the shape I then went in with a darker green and I used my fingers to blend the colours nicely and I created a dark green to a yellow gradient. Taking either some eyeliner or some black face paint you then want to outline the shapes. Now I'm taking some brown eyeshadow and I'm just contouring my collarbones and because my collarbones were mostly hidden by the shoulders I just kind of created a different shape. Now I'm using the moss that I found earlier and I'm just sprinkling it onto my shoulders. And then same again like you did earlier, taking the latex, you then want to apply some plants onto your shoulders and it kind of looks like little gardens. Using the brown cream colour I'm simply using my finger and I'm dragging from my jawline to my neck. Taking some highlighter I'm just applying this onto my collarbones and the parts on my cheeks that are visible and then apply some eyelashes. Now unfortunately I would have applied them to all of my eyes but I didn't have enough lashes. And then finally for the finishing touches you then want to put your horns on and then just start messing around until you get the desired look. Thank you so much if you actually watched the entire video all the way to the end. I really, really appreciate it. And I really hoped you found it helpful as well. Please don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram at Goth Spectrum. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.